Hey everyone, welcome to Zero to 100 with HTML and CSS. This is a project series really intended to walk everyone through the basics of HTML and CSS, get you familiar with developing in a code editor, along with some of the basics around building web applications and interfaces with HTML and CSS. If you've never coded before, don't worry, this course, this series is for you. In some videos, I may not be going through all of the, the nooks and crannies and all the nuances of certain things, but the intent is really to show you how to actually build web elements, web pages, websites, web applications with what you need to know with HTML and CSS. So the first thing we're going to do in this video to get you set up for the rest of the video series is setting up your code environment. And what I mean by that, when I'm talking about a code environment, I'm talking about the ability to actually build and develop web applications or websites on your local computer. So whether it's your laptop, whether it's a desktop, some type of device like that, we're setting up a code editor so that you on your local device can build what you need to build. And then at some point, as you get more advanced, you'll learn how to upload those uh, files and those uh, applications or sites to a server so that the rest of the world can see them. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to go to Google. As you can see, I already have it open on my screen and we're going to download uh, VS Code. So let's search VS Code. VS Code is pretty much the most popular uh, code editor out there at, uh, at, at this point in time. It came out a few years ago. Uh, it's backed and bought and owned by, by uh, Microsoft. And it's one of the best code editors out there. It's the one that if you talk to you know, 90% of developers probably at this point, especially web developers, are using uh, VS Code. It's just super powerful, super flexible. There's tons of things that you can do with it, tons of plug-ons and extensions you can add to it that really make your life easier as a developer. So if you go to code.visualstudio.com or if you go to Google and just search VS Code and click the first link, you'll come to this page and it'll automatically know if you're on a Mac or Windows or some other machine and you just click download. So click download, you'll get a prompt box. Uh, install it like you would any other application. You can take a second, get that set up. And once you have it set up, uh, just uh, you know, open it up and you know, let's, let's get running with it. You can pause the video and do that now. So I'm gonna keep going and I already have VS Code uh, installed. And so here's what mine looks like. Yours might look a little bit different uh, because you don't have some of the extensions, plugins and themes that I have installed. But the, the first thing that I want to do here before we even download the project files is I want to install an extension called live server live server is really our a go to uh, extension for VS code it allows us to uh, set up and run a local development server so that means you get a lot of the interactivity and functions of a, of a web server if you were to go to a www.com type of site you get a lot of those same uh, feature sets by installing live server and then being able to view your local application or your local files on your computer. It's just a super powerful plugin. And so we're gonna install that. So let's say this is your, your start screen. You've installed VS Code. Uh, you, you've downloaded it, installed it, opened it up, and you're not gonna see some of this stuff. You might see start, you might see some of the help stuff, and we can go over that at another time. But the main thing that I wanna call your attention to is this sidebar. You probably will have a few less icons, but there should be an icon called extensions. You're going to click on extensions and you'll get this prompt to uh, view your enabled extensions. As you can see, I have quite a few enabled. You'll also be able to search for more extensions. So I want you to, in the input box, search live server, live server, and it'll come up just like that. It will look like this and you'll see a, a, a icon that says install. So you're going to install this. It'll probably give you a prompt that will tell you to reload or restart VS Code. That should only take a, a quick second, but really this is one of the most important extensions that you need to have for VS Code in order for you to effectively run the project files that we're gonna download. So we're gonna keep going from here. We can close this out. And in the show notes uh, below this video, I will include a link to uh, this code repository. This is going to be the working code uh, folder for all the projects that I'll be building for zero to 100 with HTML and CSS. So in this starter series, I have some folders for VS code and I have some folders for our first module or first session, which will be working with uh, HTML and CSS uh, box model. So go to the link that I've supplied in the, the, the comments below and you should be able to see a clone and download button. 
box. You're going to click that. You're going to click download zip. Doesn't matter if you're on a Mac or Windows. Download it to wherever you can set it up on your desktop. You can set it up in your downloads folder. Just make sure that you unzip it so you've opened up the zip and the files are actually on your, your computer. We're going to go back to VS Code now. So I'm switching back to VS Code. Here I am. All right. This is your main start screen. You're not really seeing anything, right? No, 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 no folders open, no projects open. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do this. The easiest way is to click file. You're going to click open folder. You're going to find that downloaded directory or folder or project folders that you just downloaded. You're going to click on that. And then once you've clicked on the main folder, so you should see something like setup, box model, uh, utils, you're going to click select folder. And now you've brought that project into VS Code. So now on this sidebar, if you can't see it, if you can't see the sidebar, you, um, you can always go to view. And here you have the option of, of, of hiding or, or showing different sidebar elements like this. You can go to view, appearance, show sidebar. I can also on Windows hit control B and, and show it again or, or hide it. That's control B on Windows, command B on Mac. So we're going to get started. And the first thing I want you to do, because we've already installed live server, is I, I'm going to give you, there's, there's, there's a powerful tool in VS Code called the command palette. And this allows you to run different extensions, different commands, uh, open different files, just do a lot of stuff within VS Code. And so the easiest way to open it is to hit view, go to view, command palette, and it's going to bring up this option. We're going to close that out. You can also do uh, on Windows Control Shift P. On Mac, it's Command Shift P. But again, we're going to go to View. This is the Command Palette. This is kind of like the 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 HQ of VS Code. So you're going to open Command Palette. Here you're going to type live. I can type. You're going to type Live Server, and you're going to see a couple different options if you've already installed Live Server correctly. You're going to see Live Server open with Live Server. You're going to see live server stop live server. So if live server was running, you'd, you'd, you'd be able to stop it. And then you're going to see live server change live server. We're not going to worry about change live server right now. We're going to click live server open with live server. So we've clicked the live server open option in the command palette. And this is going to bring us to our the root level of our project folder. So this file that you're seeing right here where you see zero to 100 with HTML and CSS and some links. This is this index file in our root directory. You don't have to worry about this. There's nothing you need to change on this. I created this just so it'd be easier for uh, us to navigate through this folder as we're working on, uh, on different projects. So from here, where I want to take you guys to is the code editor setup uh, folder. And that you'll find in your source. If I'm, I'm going to be clicking a lot back and forth uh, between VS Code and, and my web browser, just, just be mindful of that. And also, don't worry if your VS Code looks way different than mine. If you've just installed it, there's a lot of uh, plugins and extensions that you may not have. There's, there's themes that make it look different. There's icon packs that also make the icons look differently. So you're probably seeing a very different version of VS Code than what you see on my screen. But I'm going to walk you through some of the changes and some of the updates that we're going to make to VS Code just so you're a little bit more familiar with it and you can get up and running when we actually start, start coding. So I'm going to go back to my browser. Here, again, we have live server running. If you don't have live server running, you can go to the command palette. You can come here. You can go to view, command palette. You're going to search live server, and you're going to click open. I'm not going to do that right now because mine's already running. It'll bring up this, this folder or this file in your browser. From here, I'm going to go to lesson number one, code editor setup. I'm going to click sandbox. And so I've made a, a, a list of all the downloads and plugins that you'll need to get up and running with VS Code. You can kind of ignore these first two because you should have already downloaded them. This goes to the code repo so that we're working in the project folder, which obviously we're working in right now. This goes to the VS Code site that we started at so you could download VS Code. And here are some of the essential plugins that I think will make life easier as we're building out uh, applications with VS Code. So we already downloaded Live Server. That was the first extension that we uh, installed with VS Code. And there's there's two different ways to install extensions. There's probably actually more than two different ways to install extensions with VS Code. 
Um, you can actually go right to the, the marketplace site. You can click install, you'll get a prompt. And then if you were to continue, it would, uh, say open a visual code and it'll take you to that, to that install screen. That's one way to do it. And so I, that's why I've listed all of the extension links that we'll need to, uh, install. So if you were to go through each link, there's auto rename, uh, auto close, HTML, CSS support, IntelliSense, path IntelliSense, Indenticator. All of these are little extensions that help um, format, structure, and organize your projects as you're working in VS Code. So you can, if you want to, there's no problem with that. You can install all of these from their very screens, from their individual extension screens. You can install them. Again, you'll get the prompt for opening in Visual Studio Code, um, and then you can install. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it, which I think is a little bit easier, is the same way I showed you initially with Live Server. So you can come to this screen, and for each one of those, you can uh, search the name of them. So auto rename, for instance. And usually, they'll pop up pretty fast. There's there's a lot of different extensions with, with shared names or even the same names. Usually, you can tell which extension I'm talking about or which extension is the best just by the number of downloads. So this auto rename tag has been downloaded over 2.5 million times. You'll see an install option uh, to install it. I've already done that. So hit install. You don't have to reload on this first one. I'd recommend actually going through the rest of this list and installing each one. Again, you can do it from the actual uh, website link, or you can just search each one in the extensions uh, sidebar. So if I do auto close, which is another one that I have listed there, we'll see the same thing. It's been downloaded over 2.5 million times. Install this one. So install all of these and then you'll be able to kind of get up and running with this code. So these are the primary ones that I want you to install. Each one helps with the formatting of code again. These are optional. So if you want your code editor to look like mine, I'm, I'm right now running the Dracula theme. So it, it changes kind of the, the coloring and syntax highlighting for code uh, in my VS Code editor. And I'm also using the VS Code icons pack. So that means any of the folder or file type icons that you're seeing in mine, which I'm sure are probably different from yours right now. That's why that's because I have this VS code icons pack enabled and it's changing the icons that I see in my code editor. So this is just the initial setup for VS code in terms of being able to download it, install some extensions. And uh, I, I want to show you just a, a few other things as to why, you know, VS code is, is super powerful. So I want to go back to VS Code and just walk you through some of the basics of kind of navigating the editor, being able to look through your, your project files, create new files, create new folders, things like that, or even, you know, also searching for, for items. So if I go back to VS Code, you should have the 0 to 100 with HTML and CSS project folder open in your VS Code. So you should see something like this, source, utils, index. Again, this index folder is the main landing page that we're seeing when we open up with live server. So let's say I wanted to make uh, another file, whether it was in the root and the root means at the, the top layer of your, your, your folder. So all of this stuff is in the root directory of our zero to 100 with HTML and CSS folder. And then you have subdirectories, you have subfolders, right? You have source and within source, you have a bunch of folders in, in utils, which is just, you know, stuff for styling this project series. Uh, and organizing this project series, you have a bunch of subfiles and subfolders. Let's say I wanted to make something at the same level as index. There's a couple different ways to do that, but again, one of the easiest ways to do that is with VS Code. So if I'm coming over here to the sidebar and I'm at my Explorer sidebar view, which is this icon here, I have a couple different options that I can do. I can create a new file. I can create a new folder. I can refresh this folder just to make sure that VS Code is seeing the most recent uh, version of this folder and the most recent version of these files. And then I can also collapse all the folders uh, in this particular panel. So let's say I opened up source utils. If I hit this, it closes them. So again, I want to make a file at the root level. I'm going to hit new file and you can name this file whatever you want. Um, let's name it main, we're going to make an HTML file. So let's name it main.html. 
And now that file is made because I have VS code icons in, but even if you didn't, uh, VS code automatically recognizes that this is an HTML file. It actually made this in the source file, source folder, but that's not a problem. If I wanted to move it out, I can simply click on it, drag it. It's going to give me a prompt that it's asking me if I want to move it. I'm going to say yes. And now it's in my root directory right next to index. There's nothing in it yet, but it's there and I can change it. I can rename it, whatever, whatever it is. Let's say I wanted to uh, change this to uh, another file name. If you're on Windows, you could hit F2 or you can just simply right click on it, click rename and let's name it app.html all right now let's say i wanted to make another folder and i wanted to add this app.html uh, file to it i can come back up here instead of clicking new folder i can go to the icon to the right of it click new uh new new file i can click new folder and let's uh let's say i wanted to name this folder files and so now I have three file directories within my, my project files. And if I, again, there's nothing in here, but if I wanted to, I can drag this, drag this app.html file to files. It's going to ask me again. You could, you know, say, don't ask me. I usually just leave that off. And now, you know, I can, I've made a new file. I've made a new folder. I can reorganize and organize my project files as I want to just from this Explorer uh, sidebar over here. And again, this is refresh. And this is clap. So really your, your two main functions over here in terms of kind of organizing and or really three main functions as far as organizing and just, you know, managing your project is being able to create a new file, being able to create a new folder and then being able to move them and drag them around um, as you need to. The other thing I want to show you is that let's say I've made a bunch of, of files. So I'll just make a file one dot HTML file two dot dot html i can type guys i promise and uh and file three dot html now all these files are empty apps empty file one file two file three is empty let's say um i wanted to i don't know i'll put my name in here courtney i'll say courtney says hi now imagine you had a much larger uh project right where you potentially could have dozens if not maybe hundreds of, of folders dozens if not hundreds of files and you wanted to find the file that had courtney says hi you can click on this search icon also on the sidebar and you can search we're going to actually close all of these files just to prove the point we're going to close everything have a blank screen we we'll clear this out and let's say i you know i, I can't remember what file I, I put something in or save something in but i i remember that there was a word or text or something in there I can come to the search uh, sidebar, clicking the, the magnifying glass icon. I can type Courtney says. Oh, no. That's not. If I just type. There you go. Oh, Courtney. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, what did I type? I typed Courtney's. So yeah, that's actually a great example is that it's, it's very specific to the string. So if you're looking for a particular phrase, you don't even necessarily have to have it exactly right. I'm sure even if I typed C-O-R, I'd get even more stuff, right? This is returning uh, other string matching files, even though that's not Courtney, it's C-O-R. So really, if you can just remember a portion of what you're looking for, um, you have a good chance of being able to find it because it does string comparison when it's looking for, for, for file names or content within a file. And that's pretty powerful. Again, if you get a pretty big file and it pops up to file two, I can go right there. I see Courtney says hi, even though I only typed core. If you get a pretty big project and you have, you know, again, hundreds or dozens of files and folders, it's going to become pretty easy to forget where certain things are, even if you've been working on it for a while. So you can just come over to search, type in, you know, whatever you're looking for, even if it may take you a while and you should be able to find it uh, pretty easily with the search feature uh, on on VS Code. A couple of the other things that I want to show you guys. Um, so along with the command palette, and again, the command palette is kind of like the HQ for VS Code, where you can change a lot of your settings, you can uh, you know adjust your preferences and and things like that. There's another option. Uh, let's say you're searching for a file. So this is a great example. I just made a bunch of files. And again, let's say this is 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 even deeper. These are files with, within folders within folders. I can hit on a Windows Control P on a Mac Command P. 
and I can fi I can search for a particular file itself. So this is different than the than the search that I showed you guys a moment ago, where it's not necessarily searching the contents of files. I'm literally just searching the file name. So if I was searching for file three, it's going to pop up. I, it's highlighted in the uh, in the, the the viewfinder. If I hit enter, it opens up file three, and here I am. So those are just some powerful features that VS Code. Um, provides for you to easily be able to navigate uh, and create new files and folders within your project, search files within your project, and really just manage it because, you know, as you start building web applications, you start getting into to hundreds uh, uh, of files, thousands of lines of code, and so you easily and just quickly want to be able to find what you're looking for. Guys, I hope this video was helpful. These are some of the just basics for setting up VS Code. You now have an editor downloaded and installed. You've installed some extensions and you have the project folders. And in the next video, I'm going to get into the CSS box model and explaining what it is to build out web pages and web applications. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching this video on YouTube. Please be sure to like and share. And if you're not already, subscribe to the Coders of Color YouTube channel and activate notifications to stay up to date with new videos from the Coders of Color YouTube channel, where I'll be helping everyday people navigate technology, the web, and code. See you later.